In this video I'll show you guys how I built this robot and its diorama from scratch using trash, some laser cut shapes and some dead electronic pieces. Welcome to Cut Transform Glue. I begin the video by showing you guys how I built the torso of the robot. Right here I'm combining some random laser cut MGF pieces uh, to create this uh, basic box for the torso. And as you can see I'm also using some styrene pieces for that and I'm using CA glue to put everything together. Even though this is just a repair unit, I want this robot to look super cool and strong. So I want its shoulders very high and the head sunk into the torso. And as I often do in my projects, right here I'm adding some corners and angles uh, to the basic box that I just made. Once I was happy with it, I started working on the hips, which is also a combination of some random uh, laser cut MGF pieces. And to go in between the torso and the hips, I'm creating a basic structure right here using some old Lego pieces. Then I made this cool looking air vent right here. This is basically the underside of a dead laptop with a laser cut piece glued to the top of it. As you can see I've left the laptop piece kinda oversized and I trimmed it down with my mini disc sander. Then I glued it to the waist of the robot. Right here in the back there's a hole open on the hip so I'll cover that with some dribbles. While I was working on the back I had the idea of making a battery pack for the robot using this uh, ketchup bottle lid right here as a starting base. As you just saw I made it using some gribbles, some laser cut pieces and some styrene. Now right here I'll create the attachment point for the battery pack that will go on the back of the robot. Ok so now let me show you guys how I made the head of the robot. Again right here I'm using some old lego pieces and I'm gluing them to some styrene strips. Once I had the basic structure for the head, this rectangle right here with some rounded corners, I started adding some random uh, gribbles to it, some laser cut pieces and yeah this right here is the result. Ok so now that I've taken care of the torso and the head, I can start working on the arms of the robot. And again I'm using some lego pieces to create the basic structure uh, for the arms. Legos are amazing because they are perfectly uh, square and so I can just glue stuff to the top of it and I'll be sure that they are parallel and well aligned. I always like to keep my model pieces separated uh, to make my life easier on the painting process uh, but when possible I also like to make things posable. So right here I made some quick elbows uh, using some laser cut pieces. As you can see I'm creating right here an axle uh, gluing the elbow just to the middle piece. And here I have the basic structures for the arms done. Now let's move on to the legs. Let me show you how I made them. As I did with the other pieces of this project, this is also a combination of some laser cut shapes, some styrene and some Lego pieces. But right here I tried something different. As you can see the shape of the leg is kind of weird and different. I've used this yellow Lego piece that kind of uh, forms like a nail shape and it kind of throws the whole weight of the robot forward. I don't know why but I, I saw this Lego piece and I decided to try this crazy shape and I really liked the, the result. 
I did the same thing for the lower leg and I applied a coat of primer to the whole thing. Now we can move on to the detailing phase. Now old subscribers to the channel know that the detailing phase is my favorite one. This is when I go crazy and I test uh, different ideas. And so this is what I did right here. I started adding some details to, to the top of the surface of the robot, uh, rails, uh, bumps and air vents, anything uh, is possible right here. And as I say in all my videos here in this channel, uh, the detailing phase is when you try to overdo it. Uh, you put as much detail as possible. Uh, trust me, the primer will bring everything together by the end of it. At this point, inspired by the game uh, Death Stranding, uh, I created a third arm that comes out of the back of the robot. And to keep it movable and poseable, I made it using uh, basically some uh, Wi-Fi antennas and some griblies. This is a humanoid robot and so it needs some human hands. So I made a basic shape for the palm of the hands with some acrylic and griblies and the fingers are some plastic tubes with some wire going through the middle of it to keep it poseable. There's also a tiny piece right there on the top of the hand to guide some wires that will go to the power drill. And speaking of that, let's see how I made it. This is actually my second try, my second power drill for this project. The first one I didn't like, so I had to try it again. Uh, and I basically took the first one and I drew on a piece of paper its basic uh, dimensions uh, to use as a guide. I laid out my griblies on the top of that and started gluing them together to combine them and make the basic shape for the second version. And once I was happy with it, I added a coat of primer. So this piece right here is the drill bit for this power drill. And this is basically the axle from a stepper motor of a DVD reader and it snaps right there uh, nice and secure with just a magnet. To make the feet of this robot I decided to use a couple of clothes pins as the starting base. So I started by making some structural changes to it and then I started gluing some gribbles to it. This gray piece is the most important one. Uh, this is the connection from the feet to the ankle of the robot and the other ones are there just to make it look cool. Now I gotta say that this pink plastic right there is a tough one to glue stuff onto so I had to use lots of sea glue and baking soda and then I applied a coat of primer to both feet and this is the result. Now the robot is pretty much complete, all pieces are primed and I can start working on the diorama. Just like all my other models, uh, this one is also on the 1 to 20 scale. This is very important to have in mind because I like to add some human figures to my dioramas. And so yeah, this one needed to be 9 centimeters uh, big and I wanted to check the proportions of, of the human and the robot on the top of the base. Once I was happy with it, I started getting the griblies I wanted to glue to the top of the base, like this black one right here, which I combined with this gray one and some metal mesh. Uh, this goes right in the middle of the base and then I can start adding some other pieces just like a jigsaw puzzle. I want to create an opening right here in the front to, to put some uh, cool looking electric tubes uh, going under the base and so I had to remove a big chunk of wood uh, from it. I've covered the damage on the wood with some styrene and I also added like a round white styrene piece to the bottom of the base just to cover the hole and kind of create a pocket for the electric tubes. I could then go back to adding the pieces like a jigsaw puzzle to the top of the base. Now the good thing about going that way is that you can create some automatic panel lines without too much effort. 
these two big laser cut MGF discs are the foot pads so this is where the, the robot will be standing on top. I wanted this panel line to be perfect so I kept it separated from this tiring that goes around it. I covered all the base and trimmed all the excess but this is looking too flat so let's start adding some textures to it like these two round textures right here this is a technique that I do using some car body filler and some disposable plates I also glued some thin strips of siren to add some volume and some other types of gribbles to the base I did a final detail pass on the base and then I could start working on a cover uh, for the electric tubes opening. My technique right here is to first create like a perfect cover using a thin uh, sheet of styrene and to the top of that uh, styrene piece I could start adding some uh, laser cut MDF pieces. After I was done with it, I trimmed the styrene from the bottom, but I wasn't happy with the overall look, so I decided to trim some parts down, add some gribbles to it and change until I was satisfied with it. And again, here comes the metal mesh, I decided to cover some holes with it, uh, I really love this material. And with the opening and its cover figured out, I could finally start working on the electric tubes. This is the finished result and now the base is pretty much complete. Now let's work on the human figure. As I said, this is a 1 to 20 scale diorama and in that scale my human figure would be like 9 centimeters high. So I printed some anatomy guides on that scale and used it to create a basic like skeleton using uh, some epoxy putty. Now I'm posing it, I'm trying to find a, a natural human pose and once I was happy with it, I could start adding and removing uh, epoxy putty uh, to sculpt the figure. This human figure is basically holding a gadget, uh, checking the diagnostics that are running on the repair robot. Okay, so now let's talk about the painting process. In this project, I also did the lazy chipping technique. I basically gave it uh, like two uh, coats of paint and I chipped the second one with my hands uh, or maybe even some sharp tools until I'm satisfied with the damage. Of course, I'm adding an accent color right here, uh, this uh, light uh, green color. And I want the finish of this uh, accent color to be rough, so yeah, I'm using the, the brush uh, to paint it. And I'll chip it, showing the dark gray underneath it. Uh, just have to be careful to not remove too much stuff. I then did some masking to add some random symbols around the robot. And once I did all those steps to all pieces of the project, I could move on to the wash process. Now in this project, I actually made a mistake. Uh, the varnish that goes before the oil wash uh, is supposed to be glossy varnish and I did a matte varnish in that step. Uh, that was a mistake and the robot turned out to be uh, real dirty. But I mean, this is a repair robot, so it is supposed to be covered in gunk and, and oil from the machine. So yeah, no big deal. And then I repeated all the steps I did for the robot on the base. Uh, I did the lazy chipping on some areas, like this one right here. And this is kind of funny, but at this point I discovered that the best chipping tool is actually my fingernails. I also did the brush painting, uh, I need this base to look uh, real beat up and used. And I also did some masking, adding some random letters and numbers to the base to make it look cool. And then I did the oil wash and this right here is the result. It's real messy and dirty and I really like it that way. 
Now don't go anywhere yet because I still need to add a final detail pass. In this part of the process I add like some wires, some metal pieces uh, without paint on them uh, to, to add some texture and different colors to the project. And in this project I'm adding some lenses from some dead uh, DVD readers. I added a couple to the third arm and a couple to the head of the robot. I then added some thick cables to the legs of a robot like these ones right here and now it's time to put everything together. And this right here is the end result, this is the repair robot diorama. If you watched this far in the video, thank you so much for that, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and maybe check the links I have in the description box where you can support this channel even further. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys on the next one.